Over the years, Hyundai has developed a solid following producing common sense cars that offer a lot of great content and value. Now, Hyundai is moving into different areas. For example, they have Genesis on the luxury side. And on the performance side, enter in the Elantra, taking your commute from average to exciting. So the Elantra GT hatchback, we've seen this vehicle before, but the big news for this year is the addition of the GT Sport trim, complete with a different, more powerful engine and unique suspension. Last year, Hyundai introduced the sedan version of the Sport, but this car is different, running on a vehicle made for the European market called the i30. It's modified for our shores, so they are different even though they share the same Elantra name. There are lots of established players in the hot hatch category, starting with the one that kicked it all off, the GTI from Volkswagen. So this is a five-door hatch. You look at the GTI five-door hatch, it starts at thousands of dollars more than the most expensive version of this Elantra Sport. Then you get into other cars like the Honda Civic hatchback, roughly the same price, but this car has more power. Another consideration might be the Ford Focus ST, considerably more power, but also still more expensive. Now one criticism of this car might be the lack of boy racer looks. It doesn't look fast or special. Rather, a nicely equipped hatchback with standard LED headlamps and tail lamps. With the sport model, you also get dual exhaust, 18-inch wheels, panoramic roof, and all for roughly $27,000. Now, as I mentioned, this is based on the European i30, which is not a hatchback version of the sedan we get here in North America. It's a different car, and it has an average back seat, what you would expect in this category of car. The trunk, the cargo space is actually very useful. It's really quite deep. There is a negative to that, however, lifting items over the bumper could be a challenge for some. The first thing you notice is the tablet style screen that's in the center of the dash. That's standard equipment. We're seeing this trend in the auto industry. However, this one looks a little bit cartoonish and cheap. The rest of the car, however, does not. So there is an Elantra GT, just not the sport model. And it comes with a two-liter engine with 161 horsepower and what's called a torsion beam rear suspension. This car is quite different. It comes with a smaller turbocharged engine and independent rear suspension. The engine is a 1.6 liter with 201 horsepower and available with a six-speed manual or seven-speed dual-clutch transmission. To get the automatic transmission, it's $2,000 more. Now there is a button here in the center of the console, it's called drive modes. You get the default setting, eco for economy and sport for sportiness and it changes the sensitivity of the steering, the transmission shifts and throttle response, all in an effort to make this car more sporty. But is it sporty? Now you can get around this by opting for the manual transmission, which is the cheaper version and the one that I would get and it certainly makes it more fun. But here's the interesting thing. I had the sedan version of the Elantra Sport last winter, and I love that car. Manual transmission, it felt different, but it is different. It's a different car. That's the North American sedan. This is the European hatch, and you would think the European hatch would be livelier and more fun, but it's the opposite. This is a car that you can cruise in and enjoy the luxury amenities that we pointed out, every single day. It's a very nice, comfortable commuter car, but it isn't, in my opinion, at the top end when it comes to a performance hot hatch. In fact, this car actually shines out on the highway. So if you're somebody that does a long commute every single day on the highway, this is a great companion. The base sport model also comes with some nice standard safety features, blind spot warning and cross traffic alert but the buyer will need to spend money for this ultimate trim that we're driving today for just over $30,000 to get autonomous braking and forward collision warning, plus lane keeping technology. Now the Elantra Sport and the Elantra GT Sport they share a common name, but they're very different cars. In fact, I found the sedan to be more performance oriented. This is a great car if you want a little bit of standard luxury in your everyday commute. It's the value leader in the hot hatch category. So Zach, the big question on everybody's mind is, is this a GTI killer? Absolutely 
not. And you know what? Volkswagen will sleep well at night knowing their GTI sales are absolutely safe because the GTI was the original and you're only the original once. And they've been selling that car since the late 70s. This car is new to the market. However, Volkswagen charges a premium for the GTI, a big premium. When you go down in price, the Honda Civic Hatchback, the Focus ST, those are the cars that this Elantra competes against. It's a fine car, but it's no GTI.